Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the $1,000 Magic Booster Pack to celebrate the 30 year anniversary. <laughs> what better way than, you know, buying a box for four booster packs and, you know, pulling a Black Lotus. Many people consider a proxy. We can have that argument. But yeah, so has my opinion on the product chains as I grow closer to it. Kind of, kind of not. I think really the circumstances of my live breaking store has changed and that's really what I still think that as a product, as the great Merrill from Wizard of Coach would say, it's not for you. It's not for 99.9% .9 of Magic players. Uh, definitely in a recession, it is very un... It's not good advice to give anyone, hey, you should go out and buy some of these for $1,000. I mean, basically, instead of buying a iMac uh, on Amazon or a laptop, a premier laptop, of, you know, one of the higher end laptops that you could get, yeah, you're gonna go out and buy some cardboard. Not, again, not for everybody, right? Not for everybody. But I go back to like Raid Shadow Legends and why these gotcha games, Fake Grand Order gotcha game I play and I put money into. The reason that they're, you know, the whale support the whole ecosystem is there are people who buy this product, uh, which has obviously direct to consumer is the best way to get margins. How much does it cost to print out a box? How much does it cost to print out a booster? Probably no different. Maybe the backs are slightly more black ink than brown ink. So maybe that has like a tiny bit of a extra cost. But no, it's no different than printing out a booster of standard cards, right? In fact, I think uh, in, in many cases it might be cheaper, especially if it's a collector's pack and it's all foil. There, this is no foils, to my knowledge. Um, yeah, I, I do believe that this package for $1,000 probably costs less than a dollar to print with the complete packaging. And maybe, let's say they ship it with tracking and priority and signature, maybe $9 shipping on a $1 item, $10 total probably. I mean, if you wanna be very, very up end, um, you could probably say maybe $20 worth shipping and so on, but again, there, there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they're making 99.9% .9 profit on printing cardboard. And to ask somebody, anybody to pay a thousand dollars for this product is a lot of money. Uh, to ask them during a recession and to basically flex for the investor's sake, oh, we're gonna make yay amount of money and so on. I think it is, uh, it's interesting. Um, so my, the idea of the product has never really changed in my mind because I know that there will be people who buy a thousand dollar for a box is nothing compared to sports cards. The worst products like Spectrum and so on, these are like awful products. Optic, Dondrus, any of these hobby products in sports, they sell for a thousand bucks. You have Eminence Football selling for 30,000. You have National Treasures that often clear 10,000 a box. And yeah, so I mean, where did they get the idea from? I would say they probably got the idea from Alpha Investments because $1,000 is kind of weird. It's a weird space because I don't think they got the idea from sports cards because sports cards, like it starts at a thousand and then towards the high end. So it's not like they made a $30,000 collection, right, guaranteeing you a Lotus, that would be equivalent to eminence uh, in terms of cost. But they had to begin somewhere and they began with the $1,000. Now, will I be buying a ton? Um, so going back to the partnership, I had a part, I had a person I thought would be a good partner. It didn't work out for many reasons. I lost quite a bit of money. I lost a lot of time. And more to a point, it prevented me from locking down a location, which actually was probably a good thing because that location dropped in, what was it? Like $45,000 in price already. And I think they're gonna drop another $45,000 before the end of December, before in December. 
they got to move it because property taxes. And so I understand what they're doing. Um, they don't want to pay taxes on it. Taxes are much higher now because everyone's property is worth so much more. Apparently, uh, I got my property taxes for the year and my home has increased by $150,000 over a year, which is dumb as hell, but it is what it is, right? I mean, they gotta pay the tax. I mean, if we're gonna give student loan forgiveness, we're gonna give more benefits to the elderly and all these really great programs that we have, um, we have to tax somebody and we're gonna tax everybody. So back to the situation, I do not think I will be buying them to break. The live box breaking, I'm waiting. I'm waiting on two things. I'm waiting to see if I can get a location that is cheaper than it currently is because I think the housing bubble, I think the housing market is in a bubble and people will be desperate to sell soon. I mean, it's almost like the 2008 crisis where you, Detroit, you buy a home for a dollar. I'm not kidding. You buy like a whole bunch of homes for like 10 bucks. You got 10 bucks in your pocket, you can buy a bunch of homes that foreclose and so on that might go to auction. Uh, in my neighborhood alone, my next door neighbor has moved out and he sold it to like one of these uh, investment companies and nobody has even like seen the place yet because it's so expensive. But if they reduce the place, maybe I buy that home. I just connect the two homes, make that my office. There's a lot of um, issue. And then the home next to that home has always been empty since I moved here in 2017, it's been empty. And it went to auction one time for 300,000 and no one bid on it. That was way back when uh, I would have bid on it if had I known that was what it went for. But anyway, there's a lot of options in real estate, there's not going to be any uh, lack of really good deals, I feel, uh, for if you want to buy commercial lease, because a lot of people are working from home. Uh, and that's what happened to this law firm, all the employees that want to work from home. So then they decide we don't need an office, and then they put the office for sale, which is actually very common. It's, it's, it's happening across every, you know, everybody is doing the same thing. So I still though I still think there's an audience who will buy the one thousand dollar booster box. Uh, will I be buying so many of them? No, because I don't have a live streaming. Um, you might have noticed I've taken quote a break from live streaming. It's a pretty it's it's not easy to dedicate hour two hours three hours of your life every day to doing this, uh, especially when you you know again I have other stuff to do. Um, and in an hour or two hours, I can make my whole all my videos for this channel, for my other channel, I can do all my dog stuff. So to spend, you know, let's say two hours a day times five days a week, that's 10 now. Eventually we will live stream, but it won't be me. So I'm taking the slow and cautious approach where A, I'm waiting for property values to go down so I can snag a really great commercial property for cheaper than today. And B, I'm waiting for the eBay platform, the live stream platform, and C, I'm waiting to find somebody. You know, honest to God, you know, it's not easy finding people. And you know, if all of these stars align, then there you go. There's the uh, that's. Do I expect to find somebody before December, which is when the date, the deadline that you have to like figure out? Like, I think it's November 29th or something like that to figure out do you want to buy this product that I will probably buy a few for myself just to open for myself. Um, I will be the demographic that would enjoy opening something this valuable. But will I br live break any of them? No, I will not. Will I buy any of them for live break? Um, assuming that I don't break all the ones I buy, I'm gonna buy five or 10 of them to break on myself. Um, maybe I'll film some of it. Maybe I won't. Uh, if I don't break, if I or I get a Black Lotus like really early on and say I buy 10 of these boxes and I get one in box five, then I'll just keep the other five sealed and whatever, right? So then, yes, there might be some in the store to break when we do go live streaming, but it was always my understanding that it would take probably until December. And now I would push that back even a year because number one, I gotta find a location. Number two, I gotta find a person that, that wants to do this full time. That is, you know, I found two people who might be good candidates, but I've tested them and now they're off to do their own things and see if they can get there. Uh, and I see would really need to like 
even beyond, you know, I would want to see that eBay would start. I, I wouldn't want to do the whatnots. I wouldn't even want to do YouTube. Uh, YouTube, I don't think is a good selling platform. I would want to wait until eBay or a competitor to whatnot emerged and I want to join that as soon as I can, you know, and invest in that platform in terms of the people that, but the good thing is the setup, the product distribution, I have a distributor now, perfect. Um, everything else is set up correctly. So everything is set up perfectly for this to take off. I'm just waiting. Again, I'm waiting for the housing or the commercial market, which is a, it's, it's high. It's just the, the real estate real estate market. I'm expecting a real estate market will crash and I can buy property cheaper than ever before, which is already, I already told you that $45,000 drop in basically 90 days. Pretty big drop considering I made an offer on it that was very close to uh, where they, they needed to be apparently. Um, so number one, that real estate is gonna get cheaper in my opinion, that's my prediction. Uh, number two, I need to hire at least one full-time employee that is really gonna be gun-ho, that will be a partner on this. You know, I've learned my lesson from a few different really bad employ or bad workers or partner, whatever you wanna call them. And you know, they, they're, there's still a lot of young people who are just god-awful entitled people. Uh, they're so entitled. The whole quiet quitting, I'm not surprised that this young generation is all about that or lying flat. They simply are too lazy to work. Um, yeah, but anyway, that other person had another issue that there was no transportation. So it would cost $100 to $150 for her to Uber. That is a lot of money and obviously she wasn't gonna pay for it. And then the setup and the all, I mean, it would have, this person would have been exceedingly expensive to hire now that I kind of look at the math. Because again, she doesn't have a car or the car is not reliable. I don't know what the situation is, but the situation is she can't Uber. The print store shop sucks and is overcharging. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, everything was really bad. The, the, every, the print quality was bad. I mean, I mean, it's just like, I did dodge a bullet. I'm not gonna lie to you. I dodged a mother effing bullet from, uh, you know, and it was, it was actually interesting because I was ready to go and she was just so, didn't do nothing. And I was like, okay, cool. Did we do something? We had, we had an inspiration speech and nothing happened. And I was like, okay, this is not gonna work. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot, it, it takes a lot for me to have to let somebody go that early on uh, even some of my laziest employees, they lasted for at least 60, 90 days. This one lasted for like less than uh, two weeks. <laughs> Hi guys.